So when Apple unveiled the new iPhone 8 and iPhone 10, they also unveiled a new processor chip. It's called the A11 Bionic chip, and it is incredible. So if you were watching the event like I was, you probably laughed a little bit when they introduced the A11 Bionic chip because it's some sort of like weird RoboCop sounding name. But when I actually looked into it, that chip is pretty incredible. So basically the way the chip works is it is a six core processor. Now four of those cars are going to be efficiency cores. So those are what you're gonna be using most of the time. They're gonna handle stuff like your apps, your messaging, the uh, operating system, most of the day-to-day -day functions of the iPhone. Now there are an additional two cores. These are the performance cores. So these are gonna be when you're playing games, if you're doing a lot of multitasking, or if you're generally doing heavier workload tasks. So when they announced this, I figured that this was going to be another in a series of just progressive steps of the Apple processors. However, when I looked at the Geekbench 4 scores when they came out for the iPhone 8, which I do every time a new iPhone comes out, I was pretty stunned. So I'm going to throw them up on the screen right now. You can see here, iPhone 8 Plus. Um, you can see we have iOS 11 is running on the phone, one processor, six cores, uh, interestingly enough, it does run at 2 gigahertz. So that's six cores at 2 gigahertz. That's pretty crazy. And it does have an 8 megabyte cache, which is something that we don't need to talk about in this video, but that is pretty interesting. So if we look at the scores, we see 4212 single core and 10,351 multi core score. That score is pretty amazing. So to put that in perspective, I have two other scores pulled up. What I have right here is a 13 inch MacBook Pro, the, the mid 2017 model. So this is a current processor. This has a Core i5-7360U, uh, which is dual core, four threads, and it runs at 2.3 gigahertz. So this is what you would find on the base model uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch. So you'll notice the score, right? 4310. So a slightly better single core score of about 100 points. But in multi-core, the iPhone 8 Plus absolutely crushes it. It is 1,000 points better in multi-core workloads. That is crazy. This is an iPhone. Now, you may be saying, well, this, this is the base model, 13 inch. This Core i5-7360U is not really a high-end processor. It only runs at 2.3 gigahertz. It's only dual core. Let's look at something a bit more high-end. So this right here is a MacBook Pro 13-inch mid-2017. But you'll notice this is a Core i7-7567U. So this processor is a much more high-end. This is actually the build-to-order processor for the MacBook Pro. This is an extra, I think, $250. Uh, still dual-core four threads, but that's pretty standard in um, U-series KB-like processors. There's a ton of these. Um, and, and, and let's look at the score. So single-core, a little bit better, a few hundred points better. Um, than the 4212, but that's because this is running at 3.5 gigahertz base frequency, which is pretty crazy. That's that's a very high clock speed. But if we look at the multi-core, the the iPhone wins. Granted, the margin's pretty small, less than 100 points, but the iPhone is very very competitive and even better in multi-core workloads than a fully upgraded. MacBook Pro 13 inch that would run you almost, I think, $2,000. So just think about that for a second. The iPhone 8 would beat out the absolute top of the line 13 inch MacBook Pro in, in a multi threaded workload, which is what really matters in, in this case. That is pretty astounding. And that's, that, is, that is the fastest 13 inch MacBook Pro you can buy. Everything before that, all the other 13 inch MacBook Pros are also going to be worse, obviously, than, than the current model. So every single MacBook Pro ever created 13-inch is slower than the new iPhone. Now, 15-inch K 
can't really compete because those are quad core processors. However, if you go back far enough to like the early days of the Retina or certainly any time before that, the iPhone will still win against quad core i7s. This is absolutely mad to think that an iPhone is now handling about the same processing power as a core i7, a dual core i7. That is ludicrous. And consider this as well. That Core i7, well, it's a U-series processor, so it, it runs at a lower TDP, probably about 15 to 30 watts. Uh, the iPhone has no fans to cool it, none, and it runs on a 5-watt TDP. So to be perfectly honest, about a year or so ago, I started hearing rumors that Apple was going to design their own chips for the MacBook Pro, and I kind of groaned. I, I, I didn't think that that was really a good idea, but right now, if we apply the amount of power that we have in the iPhone compared to the other smartphones in the category, um, some many of which score around one or two thousand in the multi-core or the single-core benchmarks, a fraction of what the iPhone 10 and 8 can handle, if we apply that to a desktop processor or a laptop processor, could you imagine having a fanless MacBook Pro that gets like 20 hours of battery life because it, the processor doesn't use any energy barely and wouldn't even need fans that would still be faster than a quad core i7? That would be amazing. That would put Apple back on top as far as the power side goes for their laptops because right now they're kind of falling behind. So that video was a little bit rambly, I know, but I hope you're am as amazed as I am because this really is a turning point in technology when we have mobile processors that are able to beat desktop or laptop Core i7s. That is absolutely crazy. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you want, go on, go on Geekbench, browse the scores, see what other things you can find that the iPhone 8 and 10 would beat as far as the processor. Post those down in the comment below. I'm interested to see what other things can be tackled by these incredible processors. As usual, make sure you subscribe and check back for more videos. I'm going to be launching a new series that I think you're going to like. Stay tuned for that.